بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد everybody in different situations different walks of life look at the end result for example if it in sports the end game who's the winner who's victorious who's going to get the gold medal who's going to win the world cup when it comes to business how can i expand how can i progress how can i make my brand known make it famous how can i make maximum profits in the corporate world how can i ca- climb the corporate ladder a politician is looking for ultimate where he wants to become the president so in dunya people dedicate their lives and sacrifice their pleasures they sacrifice their loved ones to achieve this end goal the question is when will my end goal be akhira my waking up my sleeping my movement my stagnation my breathing my loving my dying when will it be for allah so we need to check where our gaze is all the time ibn qayyim rahimahullah you say idha arada allah bi abdin khayran when allah intends good for anybody fa jarra fi qalbihi aynayn allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts two eyes in his heart he has a, a enhanced vision in his heart aynan yaraf biha al janna such an eye that that eye sees janna he loves for janna He desires Jannah. He does amal for Jannah. That propels him to do good. And the second eye, وَعَيْنًا يَرَى بِهَا النَّارُ And the second eye, where he sees Jahannam. He abstains from sin, abstains from disobedience. Because he knows what is in stall in Akhirah. So a person who's got this gaze, the end game, then they perfect the amal externally and internally as well that the salah you say muntaha al khaiba the the climax of failure the climax of disaster and disappointment is ay yuhibbak an nas fi llahi lima yadhhar lahum minka that people become fond acquainted to you when they see your outward when they see your external لكن الله يبغضك لما يظهر له في السر منك but Allah despises you because of your internal so your external people praise you people say mashallah wow wonderful but internally we are rotten so we have to be cautious and careful our end game is the qabr our end game is hashar our end game is pull sirat Hisab, kitab, mizan, is Allah happy with me? This dunya is the house of deception. We should not get caught. Like a little girl who made a cup of tea for the mother. So the mother was shocked. I didn't know you could make tea. And she was so elated, happy that my daughter made tea for me. And she started taking sips. She said, tell me how you made this, made this wonderful tea. So delicious. So he said, she said, oh mother, I watch you every day and I seen you boil the water, you add the leaves, you strain it. And this is how you prepare the tea. Just today I had one challenge, I couldn't find the strainer. So the mother shocked said, what did you use? So she said, the fly swatter. So the mother looked very upset. She looked very upset. She put the cup down, she already drank from it. She said, Ma, don't worry, I used the old strainer, not the new one. Because mothers don't want daughters to use new things. We want to keep everything new. So the daughter knew mother doesn't want her to use new things. So I used the old one. That's dunya in the dark of dunya. What seems good, what seems right, what seems like you got it under control until you don't run it by Allah and His Rasul. It is not under control. So how do I make my Allah happy? That should be our aim and ambition. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah used to say, تَأَمَّلْتُ أَنْفَعَ الدُّعَى I 
sought and seek and pondered on what's the most beneficial dua. فَإِذَا هُوَ And I pondered and pondered and I came to this conclusion. سُؤَادُ اللَّهَ الْعَوْنَ عَلَى مَرْضَاتِهِ Asking Allah and begging Allah, besieging Allah that make me happy, teach teach me how to make you happy. Ya Allah, I need to make you happy. Teach me how to make you happy. Aid me in making you happy. Bishr ibn Harith used to say, Ashaddu al-amali thalatha. The most noble, beneficial actions are three. Al-judu fil qillah. A person being generous, generous when he doesn't have generosity, when he doesn't have wealth. So there's a shortage of wealth, there's insufficient wealth, and a person is generous. وَالْوَرْعُ فِي الْخَلْوَةِ And piety in solitude. When you are alone, when nobody's watching you, when you're on your travels and nobody is with you, when you're in the darkness of the night, when you're alone with your cell phone, then piety at that time time is considered as piety. وَكَلِمَةُ الْحَقِّ إِنَّمَا يَخَافُ مِنْهُ وَيُرْجَى And speaking the truth, exposing the truth in front of the one who you fear, whether it's a tyrant, whether it's a gangster, whether it's somebody you dread, or yurja, somebody who is helping you, supporting you, your boss. You speak the truth no matter who, what, when and how. That is, that is matloob. So I believe he's ambitious to make Allah happy. That's why the Salihun used to say, the Sulaha, Inna aqsa anwa'il bu'd huwa al-bu'du ani Allah. That if a person has to consider who is the furthest person, distance person away from Allah, the climax of distance is a person is far away from Allah. Why? Allah says in His Kitab, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيِّ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ We are closer to you than your jugular vein, but you further than Allah, you are very far away from Allah, then you are the most detached person on earth. That's why Hassan Basri Rahimullah used to say, مِنْ عَلَامَةِ إِعْرَاضِ اللَّهِ أَنِ الْعَبْدِ أَنْ يَجْعَلَ شُغْلَهُ فِي مَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ Among the signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not inclined to you, the sign that Allah is not happy with you, the sign that Allah is disinclined from you, is He engages a person in actions which are not beneficial, actions that are not productive for dunya and akhirah. He gets engaged in things which are destructive. So a person starts passing his time, just buzzing his time, and in not those deeds which Allah is pleased with. Among the amal, number 25, benefits of taqwa and intention when we are making tilawat of Qur'an is to acquire the mercy and the rahmah of Allah. وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ الشَّيْءِ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ That Allah's mercy will encompass the muttaqeen. وَإِذَا كُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِطُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ so Allah's mercy will engulf you. So we are making tilawat so that we can be engulfed by the mercy of Allah. Majjama qawmun fi baytim min buyutillah. No people get together in the houses of Allah. Yatluna kitab Allah. Where they make tilawat. Wa yatadarasunahu. And they learn together amongst themselves. Illa nazalat alayhimu sakina. Kamna sakina descends. وَغَشْيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ And the mercy, the divine rahmah of Allah encompasses them and covers them. وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ 
angels surround them. وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهُ And Allah makes mention of them amongst the farishtas who are with him. So this rahma and mercy of Allah should be encompassing us all the time. And that's when a person is amongst the muttaqeen. He said about Hazrat Abu Mufazzir, a Sahabi in the siege of Bahur Sir. So after defeating the Persians in the battle, they laid siege to a fortress in Buhar Sir. And one of the ambassadors, the emissaries approached Sahaba and he said, our emperor asks whether any of you would be interested in the accord that would secure us land, give us land in the Tigris River up to our mountain. And you can have from the Tigris up to your mountain. So, Hazrat Abu Mufazzir, a Sahabi, stepped forward. And, وَقَدْ أَنْتَقَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا لَا يَدْرِي وَمَا هُوَ وَلَا نَحْنُ Allah placed on his tongue such words, neither he knew nor we. فَرَجَأَ الرَّجُلُ وَرَأَيْنَاهُمْ يَقْطَعُونَ إِلَى الْمَدَائِنِ so we saw the people from the city, they were leaving in throngs, departing, going away. And uh, we went to the Sahabi and he said, وَقُلْنَا يَا أَبَا مُفَزِّرْ مَا قُلْتَ لَهُ What did you tell him? So he replied, لَا وَالَّذِي بَعْحَثَ مُحَمَّدًا بِالْحَقِّ مَا أَدْرِي مَا هُوَ I have no clue what I said. إِلَّا أَنَّ عَلَيَّ السَّكِينَةً Accept a special mercy, rahma, tranquility descended. وَأَنَ أَرُجُوا أَنْ أَكُونَ كَدْ أُنْتِقْتُ بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرٌ I'm hopeful that I said such words which there are goodness in it. There's some good that will come out. People are fleeing. People are running away. What is happening? So, Hazrat Sa'ad then announced an attack be launched and they stood in battle formation and the catapults, they flung the rocks, were catapulted and uh, there was nobody in town, nobody to engage in the battle. So one person came out seeking amnesty, they granted him amnesty, there was nobody left. They said, what is keeping you back? The men have scaled the walls, the, we've entered as victors, there's no one to, to fight, no one to capture. Whoever was leaving, we could capture those. So they asked the man, what was that made them flee? So he said the emissary came, emperor sent him, and uh, he asked what, what, what was said, what, what, what transpired. So the Sahabi replied, يَا لَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ صُلْحٌ أَبَدًا There shall never ever be a treaty between us. حَتَّى نَأْكُلَ عَسَلَ أَفْرِيزِينَ بِأُتْرُجِّ كُوثَ Until we eat the honey of Afrizin with the citron of Kutha. So when the emperor, the king, heard this, he said, وَا وَيْلَ أَلَى this is destruction. This is amazing. This is something phenomenal. Inna al malaikata takallamu ala al sinatihim. That the angels have spoken on their tongues. The angels have spoken on their tongues. By Allah, if it were not so, these are words that Allah had placed on the man's tongue to deter us from fighting him, to deter us from fighting him. فَأَرَزُوا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ الْقُسْوَى So you all should retreat to the city of Quswa. So even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such rahmah that the Farishta spoke on their tongues. Zabu Rehana was one traveling by sea, he was mending a few notebooks when a needle fell into the ocean. He said, Ya Allah, I beg you in all eagerness, earnestness to return my needle to me. And the needle surfaces from the water and the sahabi picks it up. 
A freed slave of Hazrat Kaab radiallahu anhu says, We once on a journey with Hazrat Amr bin Abasa. And he went out to graze his animals in the midday. I went to see him and I noticed a cloud shade in him that never parted from him. So when I brought this to his notice, he said, If ever I find out that you had informed anyone about this, there would be serious problems between us. So he said, I never by Allah disclose this to anyone after the Sahabi passed away. Nabi alayhi salam was rahmatul lil alameen. Abiyad bin Hamal reports that once there were an infection of ringworm on his face. There was ringworm and he covered his entire face, his nose. So when Nabi alayhi salatu salam found out, he passed his Mubarak hand over his face. There was no trace of infection. So rahmatul lil alameen. Hazrat Rafi bin Khudaj says, Once I went to Nabi alayhi salam when there was a large pot of meat being cooked and I noticed a delicious portion which caught my eye. So I took it as fast as I could to get to it and I ate it up. I remained ill for one year. I told the Nabi of Allah about this. He said, Seven people had their eye, they had their hearts on a piece of meat. Nabi alayhi salam passed his, he passed his hand over my stomach. I vomited out a green lump and uh, he took a qasam that up to that day as he narrated this narration he never ever got any stomach pains but sometimes nazar and the evil eye sometimes certain illnesses certain consequences certain calamities befall a person we have to be cautious especially nowadays with social media and that to preserve our own sanity people lose their mind Things go wrong, the cars don't start, phones start dropping, things start going wrong. You know, you're in the wrong now. I need to make my matter with Allah right, stay away from the evil eye. The Sayyid bin Jubair was present one for the funeral of Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas when he passed away in Ta'if. And a white bird which they had never seen before entered his coffin, they looked and they wait for it to emerge and it didn't. They search for it and they couldn't find it. And when he was buried, the following ayat from his qabr, Sahaba heard a voice, Ya ayyatuha nafsul muthma'inna o contented soul, irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiya, return to your Allah who is pleased with you, fadkhuli fi ibadi wadkhuli jannati. Enter amongst my chosen bondsmen, my servants, enter my Jannah. Nabi Ali Salam used to lean on a date palm when he used to give his khutbah. So, Sansar made a suggestion, will build a pulpit for you. They build the pulpit, Juma came. Nabi Ali Salatu Salam was no more leaning on the palm. Sahaba could hear the scream like a baby, like a small child. Nabi alayhi salam descended the pulpit, embraced the tree and uh, its sobbing stopped, otherwise it was sobbing and crying like a child and when a child becomes pacified, it became pacified and he said, had I not embraced it, O qal, it would have remained like this until Qiyamah for the shock of the Nabi of Allah. Nabi alayhi salam then had it buried. Hazrat Hassan would weep and say, O oh, servants of Allah, when a piece of wood could cry out of the desire of the Nabi of Allah, how come you people do not have any shock for the Nabi of Allah? Likewise, so much Rahman on Sahaba that when a Sahabi Hazrat Sa'ad bin Mu'az was buried, then one of the Sahaba took a handful of sand from his qabr and when he opened his first, he saw it was musk. Nabi alayhi salam was very happy. He said, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. In another narration, when they took sand from the cupboard and it was musk. And when the Sahaba narrating says that each time we dug from the grave, the fragrance of musk came out of the cupboard till we came till the last. So much rahmah and mercy descended on the muttaqeen. We also should strive so that we are engulfed with the mercy of Allah. The amal for today is that not to ask from anybody anything. 
من تكفل لي ألا يسأل الناس الشيء Whoever takes a responsibility to not ask anybody for anything أتكفل له بالجنة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes guarantee for his Jannah. So as the Thoban said, I told the Nabi of Allah, Anna, I give guarantee. And after that day, he never asked anybody for anything. And he just said, فَكَانَ ثَوْبَانُ يَكَعُ سَوْطُهُ His whoop used to fall while he was mounted on his horse. He would not tell anybody to pass it to me. He would personally go down, take the whoop, and then return on his conveyance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.